What's up, everybody? Welcome to the PHDJ Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Joe Bunn. That right there is my man, Mike Walter. Mike What's Walter. up, Mike? I'm good. How are you? Good morning, sir. And so if you're watching on video or happen to be watching live, beside me, literally, it's not an optical illusion, uh, live in the studio here in Raleigh, North Carolina, is my friend Kaylee Weiss. Hello, hello. Hello. And she's here from Austin, Texas, actually uh, here filming some ads for a course that she is getting ready to launch that she'll be hearing more about in the coming weeks because it is going to be very DJ friendly. It's going to be all wedding pro friendly, but uh, also going to help DJs as well. So we have some ads that we've been shooting. I actually held a puppy yesterday, which was very... Uh, My wife really loved that cute. picture. I know she, she said, did. look at I, Joe with the, the puppy. A puppy and yeah. Joe smiling. It's like the most <laughs> rare photo on my entire Well, Instagram. you're not a dog hater, are you? No, no, no. He no. was really awkward. I was awkward. I was awkward. <laughs> it's been a while, man. It's like I, me I, with babies. I'm the same way. When somebody hands me an <laughs> infant, I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. I think you I'm going to hurt it. thought he was it. holding a baby. He was just kind of yeah. wiggling it around. Yeah. <laughs> It was adorable. She was like, support the dog. Um, so so anyway, you, wait, hold on. You said, Kaylee, yeah. we're going to hear about this stuff that you're shooting ads for in the next couple of weeks. Can't you tease it at least for our audience? Yeah, Can you give sure, us a sure, little sure. something? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so good. I'm a visual good. brand strategist. So I yes. work with small creative businesses, mostly in the wedding space. Um, we actually calculated I've seen over a thousand wedding pros websites that I've had the opportunity to audit. So I've and probably seen how many some, DJs? Oh, hun I mean. Definitely hundreds, two hundreds plus. And so mine is I know in the top ten, wrong. right? Please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I I see the areas that I'm like these small improvements. And so I am very much about like where data and strategy meets aesthetics. And so there's such small things that you can be doing to your website and to your brand that makes such big impact to get couples to reach out to us. Um, and so I'm doing a five day challenge, essentially helping people DIY small polish and polishes changes to their website of maybe things they just haven't thought of. They can do it themselves, hopefully, or if they mm -hmm. work with a designer on their WordPress, Squarespace, whatever they're on, what we'll be teaching will be applicable. So very cool. Should be good. Now's the time because I'm hearing a lot of the uh, inquiries are on the rise they are. for fall and for 2022 they and are. now into 2023. So it's going to be great. It's it's gonna be yeah. Good. And we're not seeing 23 so much, but 22 is definitely where Bananas. we're getting yep. yeah, tons of leads and um, tons of people looking at our site. So, yeah, I'll be signing up for that. Cool. That sounds like a great opportunity. Yeah, I'm super excited. And we're going to kind of, we were talking about what we wanted to talk about today. And I'm like, can we just cover some of the things that I see right away that are that easy are fixes yeah. that people are doing wrong? Or when I'm having conversations with mobile DJs and I'm like, there's a disconnect happening here. Um, I want to cover those things. Yeah, Definitely. that's, so that's a great topic. Yeah, Launch and, it. And, I'm actually pulling up my site so you can tell me what I'm doing wrong right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to be doing that before she leaves today. So, I mean, I'm going to kind of let you just kind of go off your yeah. notes a little bit. You know, Mike and I do a lot of interview style and we bring on guests. Mike usually like has to write the questions for me. I'm not very good at this whole producing thing, but but. You know, since you are so custom accustomed to speaking, and, and again, if you don't know Kaylee, um, you can kind of uh, look her up. Uh, one on Instagram, it's Go Kaylee K A L E I G H. Um, That's me. But she works for what's the knot called now? I'm sorry. Well, Wedding Pro. Wedding which Pro. Is the knot and Wedding Wire. They're educational platform. I've been traveling with them for the last four years. I'm pretty much their only brand strategist that helps trainer. Um, yeah, train and right. do one on ones and things like that. So, so she knows her stuff and super honored that you're here. And uh, we, we got our ads in the can. We got to edit them today. But while we got, you know, folks watching this podcast or listening or going to listen for many years to come, kind of run through some of these things that we, Mike, myself, mobile DJs as a whole are doing Wrong. Sure. And I'm going to talk mostly like brand specific and all of this is applicable to logos, websites, you know, marketing materials, etc. But I'm going to start really foundational, which is the fact that when I start a conversation with a potential client or someone's hired me to do an audit, um, I usually start asking about their ideal customer. Like who in the last two years have you worked with that you really like? Um, who are you trying to reach? And I sometimes see that being not niche enough. So the thing about branding and the thing about marketing is that we are able to use memory and recall memory of our potential customers in a way that's like the Fortune 500 companies do to us, right? And so once we really can dial in who our 
the best people are, the people who appreciate our work or want, you know, us to show up in the way that we do our best, um, you know, jams, not me personally, but for you guys, um, then we're able to start like, okay, where are they shopping? What other brands are they buying? And when we know and are aware of those things, it's kind of like the brain when we see something, when we see a logo or we see a color palette, we have like a stamp on our brain, right? So we're creating a finite memory. So you may see something sometime, like there's a Dasani water bottle in front of me. You may see that Dasani water bottle and you've only seen it one other time, but your brain is trying to connect the dots of, does this feel familiar to me? Does it feel safe to me? Does this look trustworthy to me? Does this look like a brand that I would support? And so much like we live our lives making purchasing you know, habits in that way, as service providers, our potential couples can do the same. So I highly encourage you really narrowing down and thinking about the last two years, who are those ideal people that you love? And then what in like, I mean, go into detail. I mean, one of the, uh, uh, my I have a wedding based business also. And one of my ideal customers is a vegetarian, but they love fur which is real weird. <laughs> but weird. I found my top four clients from that year had family heirlooms, right? So they had these pieces that were really meaningful, but they were all about lifestyle. And so once I kind of narrowed into that, that changed the way that I was able to communicate with them about leaving lasting memories, um, but also understanding like, you know, I may meet them in a juice shop instead of in my office. Like it was just a little bit different. So the more so that if I'm making that, this list, if I'm making this list, should I make a list of the clients that are currently booking me or the ones I would rather be going yeah, after if those question. two things are if those yeah, two things are I, different? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I in like a technical way, we call them personas. So, right, you have your like ideal client persona. But I also think there are personas that you can create that are more aspirational. So maybe you want to tap into that next market and you start asking around, you're talking to planners being like, okay, those are the types of clients I'd like to attract. Tell me more about them, what's important to them, having real conversations and then starting a list of all of the things that really are important to them that you may want to make changes in your business um, to really help you stand out. So definitely doing your ideal that you've had as well as who you would like to be. Or if you're looking to have more diversity for the couples that you serve, when you start writing it down, you may see the holes that you may not have. Maybe you have bride and groom instead of groom or, cu- or groom and groom or bride and bride or a couple listed on something. Well, it's a small tweak that just makes them feel more welcome. Yeah, I just cool. did a challenge for about 40 DJs and that was one of the first uh, things I had them do, like write a paragraph of your ideal client. And then I even said, write an, a paragraph of the ideal vendors you want to work mm-hmm. with. It was like the first exercise I had people do. And it seems overwhelming, but that strategy saves you so much time. And I was telling him yesterday, I'm like, you can't build a brand and throw up a website and people are just going to start calling, like the phone's going to start ringing off right. the hook. Field That's of not going to happen. Field of dreams, build it and they <laughs> yeah, will come. Yeah, not right. going to happen. So I think we have to think about it from a foundational level of who are we even talking to and how can I help mirror some of the things that they feel safe about uh, through my brand and the way that I'm communicating and the words that I'm using. Like my couples like to... Are or not my couples, my clients. Uh, By the way, let me just interject real quick. Yeah. She has a like a high end stationery, I guess, mm-hmm. or invitations. So I have a company called Naldine. I started in 08 um, that does event branding and stationary touch points throughout the client experience. Um, and most of our couples spend about $40,000 on stationary, which is awesome. So we get to brand the event and work alongside planners. Um, but I get to use some of the same techniques. We're in the wrong business, use. Mike. <laughs> no, listen, I think we're in the right business for our talents and she's yeah. in the right business. for. And it's funny, speaking of that, I don't know if you can see this this poster that's behind me. The love. That, that's a poster that my wife and I made for our wedding uh, eight awesome. years ago. We um, our our wedding invitation was a short movie, um, and how our wedding was basically going to save the world. And um, so when a guest showed up at our wedding, there was a movie poster about it. So uh, I, I agree that. with you. I think it's it's uh, you know I think some couples don't want just an invitation, but actually want their event branded. They want a logo for their yeah. event, and and just like I know your point about how companies need to be consistent, that should. Be be tied you know this poster mirrored the dvd cover that we sent out as an invitation to all of our guests Ooh, I so love cool. that. Yeah. And that, yeah. that brings up a couple of talking points one customization is key and i think it will continue to be so i think even thinking about you know you can't be one for all so when you're thinking about your branding who are you really attracting but consistency and it takes just 
no effort at all to have consistency. And I think a lot of mobile DJs have vinyls on the back of their laptops that are one logo. Then I go to their website and they have another logo. And then I go to their marketing material and they're like, sorry, I haven't reprinted these. I've printed a thousand and I still have them. And they're doing such a disservice to themselves because it takes five to seven times for a brain to see a logo. And it literally creates that finite memory. And so when you're disjointed, but even to the sense of like, how are you customizing maybe timelines that you're delivering or other like deliverables that feel on brand for their wedding? Like that small little detail goes above and beyond in terms of, you know, value. Love that. That was a great point. And that's the first one that made me go, oh, I don't think we're doing that. I think our branding probably ends once we've closed the sale, but that is a great point. I don't know what my couples see when I'm sending them things like timelines and, and that's something I'm going to look at today because and I think you're right. The branding should be planners being able to have that conversation with the planner and Great be like, point. okay, you know, what is the look and feel? Because now planners are, you know, all focused in on having that custom mm. experience and custom look and feel for one couple. And there's no reason mobile DJs can't be a part of that with all of the, you know, stuff that you provide along the way. Great. Beautiful. What's next? Uh, so I think it's in, in the same sentiment, uh, you got to know your vibe. So I think sometimes I'll see a mobile DJ who is probably almost more on the MC side. They're a little bit more reserved. Um, I'm talking to them over Zoom and they're dressed up a little in a polo shirt. You know, they're very put together. And then I look at their logo and their branding and it looks like I'm going- they a wild to, or, or yeah. right. I go on their website, I'm like swimming through the matrix and there's like, you know, graffiti Hawaiian everywhere. Hawaiian shirts and, and Hawaiian yeah, shirts. Right. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is not, I just almost was shocked looking at the website and then seeing this person who's calm and who's, you know, well-spoken. And so I specialize in in visual psychology. So for me, it's like, you should know what colors speak for you. You should know the type of imagery that speaks for you. And just because you're a fanboy of someone doesn't mean you need to mirror what they're doing. So I think, you know, for someone like that, a yellow or a blue is going to be a color that's like calming and bringing joy and trust to the situation. 90% um, of snap judgment uh it base is based on color of alone so when someone sees the first 2.6 seconds on your website that color is sending a message to them and so having color that matters i think works and all about imagery too i think um i i it's hard to go into on a podcast about this but like brown tone images are very rustic you know blue tone images are gonna be like crisp and modern. And so I think if you're wanting to go in a more modern sense, choosing images really wisely um, from photographers that you're working with are, it was really key. Love that. Love that. Yeah, I think Joe and I talk pretty consistently on this podcast about uh, taking as many pictures as possible, whether it's headshots or staff pictures or, or just branding photos and doing it as consistently as possible. And, and I think your image can come out there as well. I mean, I'm not a sneaker with my suits guy. I just, to me, that's not my look. And I, if I ever tried it, it, it just wouldn't feel right for me. Joe is natural in that look. So uh, that right there, you, you know, the two of us taking pictures, clients are going to go, okay, I prefer that or I prefer that. And, and we're both being ourselves. Yes, yep. exactly. Agreed. And that being said too, while we're on the website and visuals, add some space, give the eye a little bit of resting area. That's more of, um, I have a graphic communications degree and having white space, I feel like sometimes there's so much content you all need to have on your website and my eyes just like, where am I even going? So on any platform, you can just add a little bit of spacing so that I can really digest section by section because millennials have an attention span of eight seconds, Gen Z, who are coming up hot are of 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 even less. So I, I had heard that we... suggestion years ago, even about a business card. I had heard you should be able to place a quarter on a business card and at some space not block it. anything. Yeah. Oh, wow. And if yes. you don't, if your business card is that crowded that a quarter is going to block some text or photo, mm. space I mean, look at Google's website. Google's the most successful website in the world. There's plenty of white space yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. Your your mind is not busy looking at a million different Great things. Correct. So. And I think it allows yeah. people to really digest the information. And I love that you said that because I even say almost anything you design, business card, marketing material, um, email promo, or if you're putting together a timeline or an invoice, you should have like a pillow all the way around it, kind of like you said. And it just allows 
the breathing space. That's a great there. visual. And a it's pillow. a less, it's a less overwhelming. And even the header, your logo at the top of your website should have a little pillow around it. It shouldn't feel too tight. It should almost be like it's framed in there, you know, in a good way. Um, and so spacing really does matter in the white space really does matter in order for our brains to just process all the things that we're seeing. Awesome. I love that. I love that. What else? Um, so I think one thing, and I would say this is a 50, 50 split. Um, I think some of the people who have been putting off making updates to their website, um, don't showcase who they are truly and who their team is. And especially in times of crisis, um, we are looking for faces. And so it is critical. You have photos of you and your team, um, on your website a hundred percent. And I know it's really, um, I don't know, awkward. I mean, no, I mean, you know, Mike and I have talked the, about this a lot. But you're great at showing yeah, photos and Mike of you, is, and Mike, Mike is, is well. good. Yeah, and Mike's I think good. it takes, I mean, it takes a little hump. And I understand that, that people are like, oh, I don't want to talk about myself. I want to talk about my music or my work. Um, but it is really important because you are front and center. You're going to be in a lot of their photos. You, you know, th- someone wants to see and be like, okay, they take a deep breath. And so it doesn't need to be like, I love, you know, long walks on the beach. I mean, but having a bio, especially for many of, I know this community who has been doing what they've been doing for 10 plus years, like you need to show that credibility. Like you are a legitimate expert and however you can express that and talk about um, the years and why you love doing what you're doing and having a photo of you and your team is, I mean, hands down, will get you the business and that inquiry over a competitor. I love that point, and and I've talked about it before about how important it is. You know, Mike has a huge team, even even bigger than I have. Always has, you know, pages for his guys. They're always in the staff photo. You know, we both have talked about how we've been burned before by taking a staff photo and then so and so leaves. You know, two weeks later, and <laughs> and you're trying to Photoshop a different head on there. But <laughs> I've done that, by the way. And but but just having them, it makes them know they're part of something bigger. Know that they're uh, they're that they're valued. They're an employee, mm-hmm. whether they're an employee or subcontractor, that they're part of something, you know what I mean? That they are part of the team. And I, I couldn't stress that more about like, put your guys, your team, your girls on your site, um, your, your sales stuff, like let them know they're important. Like Mike and I wouldn't be successful without them. He and I've talked about it before. He, he could go out and be a single operator and just play every weekend. And I could too, and probably get several thousand dollars, but it still wouldn't be enough. Mm-hmm. Not to make a living. We'd still have to subsidize it with something. We we've talked about that bad nauseum on here. I have two MCs that I'm that I'm just wrapping up training, and we're just going to start booking them. And I have a night scheduled in a week and a half where they're going to come in. We're going to do pictures of them. We're going to shoot some video. We're going to interview yep. them because I need to get them up on our website uh, because I can't sell them without them being up there. And yep. I don't just want to slap a picture and a bio up, but I want some interview footage and and an in depth bio and things like that. So yeah, th- this stuff is is critical. critical. And, and I'm you, all about if a you're selling audit. personalities. I'm all about yeah. a self audit for your brand and for your website every ninety days. And yep. so I think it's critical at that time for you to be like, okay, are these people still here? What can we update? What way can we change? And as a, um, as someone who's on the outside, right, looking at y'all's websites or looking at following some of you on social, like I love seeing the people who are a part of the team. And honestly, I mean, I did just tell Joe about the new Avril Lavigne song, but it's like, I want to yeah. know, you know, like, what should I be listening to? Like, where can, can your team add value and add their own personalities through the voice of the brand? Um, through the different touch points that you have. And I think that it does make you stronger. So as we move into the end, kind of elaborate on that, on this last point that you and I were kind of putting in our notes about stalking yourself. Cause I made that point as well in that challenge. Yeah. So I think it's very uh, unlikely that we Google ourselves, maybe because we're afraid of what we're going to find out. Terrified. Um, our names and also our businesses, but our couples are definitely stalking us. 80% of them are like, okay, who is Joe Button? Who is Mike Walter? And who is this company? And they want to hear from others or brands or what other people say it is. And so I think it's important that we have a pulse on what is out there. I highly recommend getting a Google sheet, writing down every single touch point that might be out there. If it's a blog post, I know for myself, sometimes I get published in things that I never get notified about. So being aware of those things um, and just going through and feeling, I guess, taking the reins, taking a little bit more control of what's out there, making a list of the things that you want to update um, as our industry gets back to the new normal of whatever that looks like, I think we're going to see a lot of changes in the things that are important to our couples, making sure we're mirroring that language on our websites and through our bios and things like that. Um, I set up a Google alert from Michael Walter years ago. 
And I'm embarrassed at how many people who share my name have been arrested and committed <laughs> murder. And because Mine that stuff all pops up. Like and I'm, Well, yours is a pretty unique name, Joe, right? I, I mean, well, and so do I. So I guess I'm lucky for that. Yeah, no. You know, I was going to compliment you, Kaylee. You got your own name as a website. I do. How long ago did you get that? Mm-hmm. I mean, your name is fairly unique. Yeah, but- so I have been, and I've been self-employed my whole entire career. So it'll be 17 years. So probably around, I mean, probably around that time. Yeah. So early yeah. in the in the game, I tried yeah. to get Mike Walter or Michael Walter probably about 10 years ago, and they were both taken. Yeah, uh, and one- I'm seeing that actually with a couple multi-ops that I've been working with that are wanting to go more back to the single op and trying to get those domains and people are holding them bots are yeah. holding them yeah. um and don't let I know, that pe- I know you people either. Who, I mean, who have named their children based on whether they can get that website <laughs> oh or not God. and they purchased wow. their child's web I, wow. I swear i know somebody who did that wow uh, he didn't name his son david he named him daniel because daniel and his last name was available wow yeah yeah I don't know if it's going to matter 20 years from now when that kid's getting into (laughs) whatever adulthood, but who knows? Couldn't hurt, you know? Exactly. He owns it now. Yeah. Well, I do think before things get busy again, like if you have not Googled yourself or audited what you have going on out there when people search you, you need to know what's happening. Um, And then I think coming up with a plan to just show up frequently because the people who are standing out to me and the people who are getting business and their phones ringing off the hook are the people who are showing up. So I think. So give me examples of showing up. up. What do you mean by showing up? Well, consistently, consistency and frequency. So if you just commit to showing up one time, you know, one time a week on social or maybe it's three times a week one the algorithm loves the consistency but people get used to seeing you and when you're front of mind uh they're referring their friends to you uh you know they have maybe rescheduled their wedding five times and haven't made a decision about a dj and they're like i've been seeing this person over and over and over um and building that trust and so showing up consistently i know i struggled to do that through the end of 2020 but it has paid leaps and bounds, even when I don't want to, that I've just planned out what am I going to do this week and showed up for my people and positioned myself as an expert to give value. And I think all of you have so much to share in terms of inspiring, exciting people about these parties. They're going to be off the hook that they've been waiting for, you know. How can you show Kay- up? Kaylee just threw a ton out there, listeners. I want to go back and highlight one thing that you said, which was magic and gold. Algorithms love consistency. Uh, And that's where Joe gets on me for posting my political stuff on Facebook. But (laughs) I drive myself up on people's uh, visuals because I because I get 300 comments on a post and and Facebook algorithms love that stuff. You're one of the first people that come up um, on my feed. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. So and even if you're on the feeds, I think you're good at showing up on the feed, Joe. But um, show up in stories and whatever that might look like. It can be raw. Like show what you're do an office tour, do you know a gear review? Like it doesn't. I have um, a client who is really into making mixes now for the gym, and so I'm like, why aren't you sharing these? And why aren't you talking about song selection? And so that's something now. He's like, oh, I can post about that once a week, and people are loving it. Yeah, you know, that's my like, biggest find, area find of what you're passionate about stories. sharing. Yeah, and I need to it. do stories. Yeah. yeah, man, this has been good. Yeah. Thank All right, Mike, me. I know so you got to run. Well, I, tell, tell us one more time. How can listeners? How can our listeners connect with you? Yeah. And, and where are we going to find this five-day challenge? So you can find me mostly on Instagram at GoKaylee, like you said, G-O-K-A-L-E-I-G-H. Uh, my name is complicated, but my website is KayleeWeiss.com, K-A-L-E-I-G-H-W-I-E-S-E. Um, I am going to be announcing it here in the next two weeks. I'm not going to give the final dates away, but it will be held in March. It will be five days. Um, and I will put all of you to work, but you will see results at the end. And I know many of the wedding pros I've been talking to over the last couple of months had plans, all quarantine, to update their websites. And here they are not attracting the people that they want to and or being relevant in a way that they know that they really could be. And so uh, these small tweaks and changes I'm going to be recommending are going to definitely be driving uh, inquiries. Well, Joe, when when that project is ready to be announced and launched, we will definitely mention it on air because I'm sure our listeners are going to want to thousand percent, thousand percent, absolutely. This has been wonderful. Yeah, Fantastic. good to see you, Mike. Good to Hopefully see you in person. In person soon, someday in the next yeah, couple of months. Soon you'll be at uh, Wedding MBA, I'm sure, right? I will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If not before that, I'll see you there. Sounds awesome, good. All right, Mike. Okay. Great to see you, man. Good Have morning. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your day, man. So long, everybody. 
See y'all. Thank you.